Oh, hey everybody in the model car community out there. Welcome in the shop. Well, how do you like that intro? I got that idea from if any of you have ever watched a hyperscale, their, that channel. Um, he always used to do that. Every video started out with him like with his back to the camera and then he'd roll around. Oh, hello. <laughs> That's my lame attempt at artsy film work. But anyway, this video was just to. Um, just an update video, a uh, lot to update about. Um, since I've done the little machining series there, uh, I've had a lot of questions and as many more in just like messages and things like that. So I'm going to continue on probably with some more, another series of some videos. And since the majority of comments and things have been about CNC and people want to see that stuff, and um, so. I'm going to be setting up some uh, something in a little bit more of a production mode um, instead of just, just making individual parts. So as I go along with that, I'll be filming and I'm going to try to, to keep it down into like I've been doing and you know, try to keep it under 30 minute segments. I don't know if that's too long for some people. Um, I don't know. Leave, leave me comments to let me know because these, you know, this stuff takes a long time to do. And it is kind of troublesome to film everything, but but then just to break it into little short segments would be a lot of a lot of videos to show a, a project, you know, from, from beginning to end. So I would prefer to kind of keep it, you know, in that 20 to 30 minute range. But I don't know, let me know. For the people that's interested in it, you know, in that stuff. Um, I had a, a bit of a hold up because my driver box, uh, it had an issue and it kept, that's the box that drives the uh, stepper motors and controls the, the motors. Um, it kept blowing a fuse on one of the axes and, and it was a, an ongoing issue even when I was doing the machining videos. That's why I didn't have to worry about it because I was doing that stuff manually, but I had to eventually get that addressed because I couldn't continue getting set up and getting into the CNC situation until I addressed that issue and I had to do a little bit of back and forth uh, with Sherline on the box and spent a good part of the day back and forth troubleshooting and doing all this stuff but you know eventually determined yeah the, the box it was an issue they they were very nice about it they sent me a box out like next day air and told me just to make one if I know when that's working and got it all checked out and just send the other one back so I got a you know props to Sherline those people have been wonderful about anything that I've ever asked them about, and um, uh, and I've had to pick up some obviously some metal. I've bought a bunch of um, of rod and square and rectangle, uh, sixty sixty one aluminum, uh, three foot sticks uh, through uh, online metals. Yeah, one of one of the metal suppliers. There's no limit, and got a good deal on it. So. Couldn't complain, so I, I'm stocked up on metal now. The other thing I needed, obviously, was some more tooling. Uh, the little bits, I mean, I have bits and, and mills and stuff, but of course this equipment, you know, these little jobs, these little parts and stuff require very small bits. And, you know, it can get very expensive really quick, and they can, they break like that. So I had to kind of do a little shopping and research and stuff, and. Uh, and uh, found a good deal, found out where to get some stuff, found it on sale, plus a discount, just lucked out. So I picked up a bunch of bits and things, plus I have some some more bits and odds and ends coming from Norm up in Canada. Um, he's got some stuff left over from a, a router, I believe, and uh, he was just ex extremely generous in offering to send me some stuff uh, that'll be put to good use. So thank you, Norm, um, once again. And I'll have to do something for them sometime down the road here. Um, but anyway, yeah, I had to, you know, I've had to pick up some things to kind of continue on anyway. So that's why there's been a little hiatus in the videos. Um, I am going to do, as I said, a little video on, on the, the first one I'll do is going to be about setting up. I'll probably do some heads, but I'm going to try to do it as in a, power, in a production mode and with the CNC and try to explain a lot of it but I don't want it to turn into like a you know a schooling detailed every thing about it 
type videos. I'll just point out things as I go along, try to keep the videos going, keep them interesting, and if you've left questions, they can always post them, and we can always talk about it later. I'm also going to do a video on, by, by, by request, <laughs> more than one request, I'm going to do a video on machining wheels, you know, uh, some intricate rims. Uh, that's going to be kind of secondary. Um, but on all these videos, I plan on kind of maybe filming a few ahead. And that way I can maybe put out a video a week or something like that. And kind of keep the flow going on that stuff. And I'd still need to have set a little time aside to finish up the Streets Caribbler and the Roadrunner. Uh, they're where I left them in my last videos. Of course, they're both nearly done. Um, so th that's going to be addressed. I got those sitting up on the bench up here, actually, uh, ready to go. Um, I've got uh, a re review I'm going to throw in uh, somewhere in the mix here, or sort of a comparison review opinion video on some candy paints. Um, I've got the set, or most of it, I believe, of the Outclad candies. And I also have a set from Badger, which is a uh, an acrylic candy set. And I've already played with both of them. And uh, so I'll do a little setup video and show them a little bit and just my opinion on it. And maybe just kind of give you guys an, a picture of uh, how they spray and, and uh, how they look. Uh, I think most people know what candies are and everything. But... Uh, I think it'd be a good little video. Uh, while I'm doing that, I'm going to finish up. I've got the little Volkswagen Zinger that I started on. Uh, it's practically done. Uh, I've already painted the body in a candy color. It looks great. So I'll finish that little kit up and show it. It's just practically done. Um, let's see. There was a question posted about Chevy Cheeseburger, or maybe somebody posted a question to him, or I forget now. I've heard a few comment videos on. AMT versus Ravel versus you know Monogram, Lindbergh, and so on. Personally, for me, I just build what I want to build. I mean, if the car is only available by AMT, or or if I see an AMT kit that I'm like, ooh, hey, I'd love to do this with it, I'm gonna buy the AMT kit and build it. I mean, I guess I'm I'm far enough along in my modeling that I, I don't really get tripped up too much anymore by you know, bad fits and things. I'm very, um, and I'm very, I don't know, I guess you could almost say anal about test fitting, test fitting. I'm constantly checking and fitting and checking. Every time I get it further in the build, I'm always like checking things, checking the body, checking fits. That way I can, I kind of catch things as I go that might need to be addressed. Uh, plus, you know, I'm usually like putting different wheels or bigger wheels or tubbing and all that. So that adds a little extra complexity anyway. And you're going to, you know, definitely got to test fit stuff. So, um, but I mean, I've built like the, the street scribbler, for example, uh, went together just fine. I mean, there was nothing wrong with that kit. It's actually a very nice kit. Uh, the Catalina that they have is a really nice kit. The, uh, the Ford um, or the Chevy, the 50 Chevy truck. Didn't really see any issues with it. Went together nice. Those are all AMT. Uh, the Roadrunner I'm building, I didn't have any troubles with that at all. It goes together really nice. And it's a um, monogram kit. Um, Lindbergh, I, I built the Lindbergh GTO. Lindbergh has several, they have a, a good prob, I mean, 10, 8, 10 kits that are actually really nice kits. It depends on the era of where the kits came in because like with uh, Ravel and, and AMT, Lindbergh, they bought out other companies and, and they had their high points and their low points and, and eras of when they were putting out really good kits all of a sudden and, and you know stuff like that. So they all have their good and bad. I mean like Ravel, the, that, um, the one that I was gonna do for the Fast Jimmy, which is kind of stalled, it's that bad man. Uh, that thing's not so hot. <laughs> I mean, but you know, it's an old kit. I think it's more age. You know, obviously a newer kit, newly tooled kit. Whoever does it, it's gonna be a better kit, better quality. 
Uh, of course, you got Tomia and Trumpeter. Uh, I mean that that are kind of a step up. I mean, even above Ravel, uh, you could almost say, um, no doubt. I mean, and a company that I'm really excited about, and for what I've seen so far, is fantastic. Is Mobius, um, and they're coming out with the truck, uh, a Ford. What is it? A 70, 71. Uh, they're coming out with a couple other Fords, a, a, a Fairlane, and or what is it that I forget what exactly what they're coming out with, but the, the stuff they've, they're coming out with now, I can't wait to get my hands on. Um, everything I've heard about them and what I've seen from the one kit that I've messed with, uh, it was very well done, very well packaged. The, the, the instructions are really good, the fitment, the quality is really nice. So that's a company that I think is really kind of coming up. Um, I just don't think they're. I mean, they do a lot of other stuff too, so they're not coming out with car models as rapidly as other companies because they're doing the monsters models and the sci-fi stuff and all that too. Um, but you know, but in a nutshell, um, I mean, you can't. I can't knock AMT. It's an old. They're old molds that have been kept alive for us modelers of every generation to to enjoy, and. Um, I mean, if, if, if all the AMT and Monogram and Lindbergh and all those models just all of a sudden disappeared off the face of the earth, that would really suck. You know, that's the way I look at it because there are so many great cars and kits and stuff out there that, you know, you can at least get a great body and some motors and parts out of that, you know, that, you, that would still be around to do. So, that's my take on that. Um... I did pick up, speaking of kits, I did pick up just a couple acquisitions. I haven't bought a kit, quick kit in quite some time. Uh, and I do need to put a put an order in or whatever, uh, because there's several out there that I'd like to go ahead and get, especially like the CUDA that's out and a few others. Uh, but I did pick up a couple, and surprisingly, they're not even car models. Uh, I picked up this Tamiya Komatsu Bulldozer. Um, and I bought this strictly just to play with uh, weathering, you know, to, uh, I'm just going to just, it's going to be a weathering project. It's not a big kit, it's a 148th, um, but, you know, obviously it's going to be a, an easy build, and I basically just, you know, I'll basically just put the whole thing together, and then do just your armor style model uh, weathering and chipping and stuff on it, so that's going to be a fun break. Um, and it's not something that's going to take up a lot of time. Um, with the machining stuff and all this else that I've kind of got going on, I just don't have the time to go start on a an extensive hacking, bashing kit, full detail build. Uh, I'm looking at I'm right now. I'm actually looking at a snap kit that I want really bad if I can find it. And I would probably pick up most likely the next big build I do of a car will be the 112th. Uh, is it 112th? Yeah, 112th Camaro. Uh, I've seen there's two or three builds out there on YouTube. I've watched you guys. I've actually left some comments, I believe, and I'm watching those builds and with great enjoyment. And, and I want to build one myself. And obviously, I'm probably going to throw in a few little details. Another kit I picked up, just because I couldn't pass up the price, and and from what reviews I've heard and everything about it, well worth the money, is the big. 132nd Hawk. I've always had a, a soft spot for this particular plane. I just think it looks cool as hell. Um, and I've always wanted to build one. Uh, so I picked this kit up. Now how soon I'll get to building this I don't know. But I'm not, you know, I do like to, I've been in the mood to kind of stretch my wings a little bit. Uh, <laughs> no pun intended. Um, and uh, so there's a couple kit pickups I did. Um, and as I said, you know, I've picked up some tooling and bits and stuff. I also um, went out to Harbor Freight the other day and hadn't been out there in a long time and was looking around with my, as you call it, modeling glasses on and uh, really didn't find a whole lot. Um, uh, but I did, the main reason for going out there was I needed a, a better saw, so I bought a tabletop bandsaw to cut material with and stuff. So. Uh, they had it $15 off plus a $20 off coupon plus it was already priced as lower than anybody else It's, it's the same identical saws at, at Home Depot and some other places and it was just like I saved 
about 50 bucks, you know, buying it at Harbor Freight. So can't complain. The only thing I did pick up extra when I was out there, they had these uh, heat shrink tube kits on sale. This is like two two forty nine, I think, but it's just chock full of the small sizes. It's got uh, thirty of the five um, sixty fourth diameter, twenty five of the three thirty second, twenty of the five thirty second, and twenty of the three sixteenths. So for the money, couldn't complain. Um, it uh, I thought it was a pretty good deal to make little coolant lines and padding, roll bar padding, you know all that type of stuff with. So, but like I said, um, I'm going to be just, uh, I'm going to continue on with some machining videos and I'm going to try to get a couple in the can ahead of time and maybe be able to answer questions, uh, you know, as I go a little easier and not be pushed to film and machine and, you know, I'm going to have a little more time. It kind of helps me stretch out a little bit. And I'll show a little about the CNC aspect of it and this and that. Like I said, I don't want to turn it into a classroom type thing uh, too much. Although I'd like to do that, you know, but um, I would enjoy doing that. don't have a problem doing that, but I don't think that's, you know, at this time is really that necessary. It's just more or less just to see what these machines can do and what can be done with them and that type of stuff. And, you know, watch parts get made. So, anyway, I think that's pretty much the update for now. Uh, as always, thanks for watching. Uh, I've been watching a lot of videos, as many as I can. Uh, I mean, I come home the next day and there's like 18, 20, 22, 25 videos in a day that are updated on my channel page because I have so many subscriptions. And to be honest, I just can't catch up with every single one of them sometimes. So. I apologize if I haven't, if I've missed people and not commented. I have watched a lot of videos and not commented, uh, but that, but mainly because I'm on my television using through Netflix and our uh, Roku, and there's no way to comment or anything. And then I'm like, well, I'll go back and leave a comment, and then I forget who it was or what. So, but I do watch a, a lot of videos, so and a lot of these builds going on, and I'm trying to, you know, comment more. And I sure do appreciate all the comments and subscriptions on my channel. Um, but uh, thanks for watching. Stay tuned. And uh, we'll talk to you all soon. Bye.